All right, everyone, I have seven o'clock um, and I'd like to call this meeting to order at seven o'clock. Regular Board of Selectmen meeting, March 7, 2023. Welcome. Uh, first order of business is to uh, approve the minutes from the regular meeting of February 7th. I guys look them over? Great. Yeah, they look great. I did. They did yeah, look great. Yeah. Jill, Jill no corrections at all, awesome. Kim. Yep. <laughs> I looked through. I thought they looked great. Great job, Julie. Thank you. So you'll make, you made the motion, Kim? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of... A second. The seventh. All right. Yeah. Perfect. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. On to the next meeting of February 22nd, a special meeting. These also look great. Thank you. Yep. I'll a make a to motion approve. to approve the minutes from the special meeting from February 22nd, 2023. Thank you, Russ. I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Move carries. Uh, the next is for special meeting. We've been meeting a lot, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, special meeting. You're lucky I like you. Like <laughs> you. <laughs> February 23rd, special meeting. Um, also, uh, this was for our board meeting. Yeah, I, I thought they were great. That everything looked very good. Okay. On motion to approve the minutes of February 23rd meeting. Thank you, Kim. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, that moves forward. All right, uh, tax collectors report. Um, we have four uh, this month for not that big of a total, 497.51, one for a canceled registration, two for overpayment, and one registered in a different state. Um, so I'm looking for a motion to approve the 497.51 returns. So moved. A second. Perfect, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, on to the uh, Board of Selectmen Commissions and Board Appointments. Uh, our first position is for a Conservation Commission alternate. Uh, this has been up for a few months. Um, I know that they've had some interest, but at this point, uh, we will have to postpone this for another month. We have not had anyone that has uh, been selected or stepped forward. I'll make our a motion to table Conservation Commission alternate. Thank you, I'll Russ. I'll second. Perfect. Our next position is for Historic District Commission alternate. This is a vacancy expiring uh, and will continue to 1231-2026. And I am pleased to say that uh, Barbara Cover, uh, Barbara Went Cover, uh, has uh, been selected, uh, who has a great history in this town. Um, and I'm looking for a motion for that. Uh, I make a motion to uh, appoint Barbara Cover. Excellent. I, I second it and I thank Barbara. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Russ. And I, I agree. It's a great, great position. She's done a great job with museum as well. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Football. opposed? All right. Now we get uh, on to business. So our first order of business is to um, talk about the Roxbury Concord Elegance. I know uh, several people uh, are on the call because they're interested in knowing uh, the survey results. Um, we had a, a very good turnout. We had 451 uh, people oh, wow. uh, that submitted a survey. Um, as it stood, we had uh, 199 yes and 252 no. So the percentage breakdown is 44.1% yes, 55.9% no. Okay. And we, we did check. There was a couple duplicates, but nothing, nothing very... I think there were just a few. Okay. Um, that being said, uh, I did receive uh, uh, the letter um, from the RPM agency. Would you uh, like me to read this? Yes, I think that'd be smart to put it in the... Um... Okay, dear members of the Board of Selectmen, thank you for the opportunity to present our proposal and possibility of producing the Concord Elegance fundraising event for your emergency services volunteer organization. It has been an honor to work with all of you. Uh, we also wish to thank Chief Todd Wheeler of the Roxbury Fire Department, Chief Sarah Loria of the Roxbury Volunteer Ambulance Association for their time and valuable assistance. It had been our intention that and goal to produce an event that would be benefit the town's volunteer fire department and volunteer ambulance, 
while also bringing family, fun, and entertainment to your town. However, it has become apparent that there are certain members of the community who are opposed to such effort. The last thing we want to create is any distress or ill feelings within the municipalities we work. We consider the communities that we work with to be our partners. Therefore, we must respectfully withdraw our proposal to produce this charity event. We are always happy to support many hardworking first responders and volunteers within our communities. And we hope that we might have the opportunity to work with you in the future. Thanks again, Kara Kenny. CEO, the RPM agency. That's yes, clear. So it's done. Um, it's done. It is, All right, next. I actually, um, I have some <laughs> things to say. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to stick my foot in it. Good for you. Uh, yep. Okay. Well, you know, I'm of that age. I guess I feel I can. <laughs> so, um, I, I took quite a while to write something out and uh, get my thoughts together. Uh, so I'm going to pretty much read what I have here. So everybody can bear with me. That would be great. Um, so in my opinion, there were primarily three paths taken by residents for the reactions to the car show and possibly their subsequent survey voting decisions. One, those who persisted on disseminating false, untrue, and unresearched information, those whose opinions were based in fear, and those who took the time to research, weigh both sides, and to come to a decision that they were comfortable with, whether for or against. I made my decision prior to knowing the survey results because I didn't want to be affected by the first two categories of respondents. I'm embarrassed for the town and disgusted at the way in which the conversation about the car show erupted on social media. People should be ashamed at the name calling and false accusations, especially toward Patrick Roy and John Cody. Civil discourse took a vacation. As Patrick stated at the special meeting in February, we all wish the public would have asked us questions when they found the car show information on RPM's website. We were just as flat, uh, flabbergasted about it. I'm very proud of this board and the work we've done to find out the facts concerning this proposal. I'm also very supportive of Patrick's decision in, to bring the proposal to the Board of Selectmen in the first place and not just to discard it. This townwide conversation has been extremely important to Roxbury to address who we are as a town in 2023 and who we want to be in the future. Change has been here for many years and this uh, and there's no going back, but there are ways to manage this going forward, and we're proof of that. The residents of Roxbury need to get used to discussing topics and doing so in a civil manner, because I anticipate that this board will continue to bring topics to the table for review. It would be far easier for us to just brush things under the rug, but that is not what we're here to do. I look forward to having constructive conversations with anyone willing to do so. Not that my decision matters since it is now a moot point, but I based my decision on two things. My opinion of the viability of RPM marketing to successfully give the town what it wanted and expected. And the second is community spirit. I've thought at length about the purpose of events like these. For example, Pickin' and Fiddlin' is an opportunity for the public to put a face to a name, <clears throat> to see who the men and women are, that come when called to put their lives on the line for residents. It's a feel good opportunity. In good years, there's a big financial gain. And in other years, as Todd said at the public forum, they barely break even. Um, but the feel good part for residents never changes. The same thing held true for old Roxbury days. This current proposal was different. On the positive side, this model for conducting fundraising events for our EMS and other nonprofits could take a lot of burden off of our volunteers. Because let's face it, they can be exhausted and our EMS needs more volunteers. Um, the organization chosen to work with our nonprofits is most important to a successful event and to foster the feel good vibe. So my last sentence, I continue to be in favor of the concept and I think that's really important, but I was not in favor of that particular collaboration. Thank you. I appreciate it, Kim, thank you.
And I want to, uh, I would like to also uh, thank everyone that, you know, wrote letters and uh, expressed their, their genuine concern or, uh, you know, support uh, for it. There were some uh, great passion and, and some great ideas came forward. So, you know, I, I encourage that and I welcome it. Um, I, I would love for people to get more answers um, because we're learning as well. So I, I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Kim. Um, Russ, did you have anything to add? Um. Kim, awesome, just awesome, because yeah. you are awesome, and that was well done, really was. I um, agree, thank you. My, my, uh, I kind of would have went for a compromise, a, a smaller event, uh, try to please everybody, but um, it didn't work out that way. And I agree with what Kim said, that I think the way that some people treated the person who wanted to bring this to the town and just some of the things said on uh, social media, which I'm not part of, um, we don't need that. Doesn't, it's not positive. It's not productive. Um, but as a town, we came together and we listened and this event won't happen, but it doesn't mean that uh, we won't listen in the future. Um, we do support our EMS. They know that, um, and I'm sorry this didn't work out. I'm sorry it worked out the way it did. Thank you. Excellent. <clears throat> All right, without any other uh, discussion, we're gonna uh, go to the next order of business, if that's good. Good. Thank you very, very much. I do appreciate your statement, Kim. Yep. Um, okay, so now we are on to uh, another event. Um, because we've had uh, interest and, and it's come forward. And uh, I am joined uh, by uh, Bill Steers, uh, I see on the line. Um, and I'd like to, uh, if you'd like, uh, uh, Bill, would you like to talk about the, uh, the event a little bit of what's proposed? You'd have to be off mute though, sorry. Julie. I thought you were going to talk about it. Just kidding. I, I, well, I I could, but I I know you were there. I saw you there, and I figure you're you know uh, you brought this forward, and uh, I think it might be good. Okay, thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm going to yield to Julie because okay, um, oh, absolutely, Julie. Than I do. Actually, okay, um, smart guy. Could you <laughs> could you share the, the other thing that we sent to you? Um, yep, there it is. No, we no, there's the I want yeah. Looks Thank like you. fun, but what if you don't own one of those things? Well, sorry, but you get to see <laughs> one. Oh, okay, I mean, because because the other, nope the 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 other the sheet, yeah, yeah, the background. You want to just talk about it? Yeah, yeah, okay, just okay, yeah, just talk about it. We don't repeat it, you know. So. Yeah. Okay, all right, cool. Um, so what we're proposing is, um. Uh, we belong to the Wally Byam Caravan Club International Organization, um, which is um, a 16,000 member strong community of Airstream owners. And we share a passion for travel, exploration, and independence. Membership is noted by our big red numbers, which are affixed on the front of back of, our, of one's Airstream. Uh, we're proposing to do a rally here in Roxbury on uh, the weekend of June 2nd and 4th um, at Munson Meadow. A little bit more background about the WBCCI. Um, the organization was founded in 1955 by Wally Byam, who invented the Airstream travel trailer in the 30s. There are 100 clubs or chapters located across the US and Canada. Background about Airstreams. Airstream trailers are handmade in Jackson Center, Ohio, and about 70% of all Airstreams since the 30s are still roadworthy. The, the factory is one of the few in the country where you can visit and have an on-floor factory tour. For those who don't know, the Airstreams are the silver trailers that stand out. Um, our club 
the Charter Oak Club, which is Connecticut oriented, was chartered in 1971. And today we have 150 travel trailers in our membership, mostly in Connecticut, but with some affiliates in neighboring states. Our club holds several camping rallies during year, the year around Connecticut. As members of the WBCCI, we are allowed to attend other club rallies and events. And the organization sponsors an international rally, which is held in different locations around the country each year. Last year, Billy and I attended the rally in Freiburg, Maine with over 900 Airstream trailers, their owners and their pets. However, with our club rallies, we usually expect about 15 to 20 trailers. <laughs> Not 900. Not 900. Streaming on the rocks, which as you can see, um, is our plan. Um, so why Roxbury? So we, um, well, our club ha has not had a rally in Northwest Connecticut recently. We also wanted to have what we call an urban rally concept whereby the public can visit and learn more about Airstreams. We also wanted to have our club members to have a boondocking experience, which is where you take your camper and you have no electric sewer water hookup. So you're basically self-contained in your Airstream. And pretty much the travel trailers can support that setup for about three days. Rocks, the fourth reason is that we felt Roxbury has so much to offer and we wanted to showcase our town. Um, our plan. We've here's the attached schedule that we've sent out to our membership. Um, in addition to our planned activities, uh, such as a guided hike at Mine Hill, a Mine Hill distillery tour, and a tour of the Double D Living History Museum, we'll outline self guided activities such as a walk, bike around town, visiting land trust preserves, and taking part of the regional or local events which may be happening this weekend. Um, that weekend, people were very excited about the elephant's trunk, just saying. Um, <laughs> Food-wise, we would like to work with Wayne at the market to have a dinner on Saturday night, followed by an ice cream social, plus um, working with him for breakfast options. People will be on their own for lunch. Friday night, we're planning a farm-to-table type dinner uh, that we can source local ingredients from uh, or ingredients from local farms. And I've, I've actually reached out to Riverbank today to see if we could do a farm tour Friday afternoon. We originally were hoping to coordinate with a pop-up pub that evening, but Teresa she'll be out of town. She'll be out of town, so they can't do that. but we tried. Um, our impact. Uh, we hope to camp at Munson Meadow, lining up the airstreams near the stone wall along 67. Our club has, um, so that would just be a lineup of the tra travel trailers, you know, very well organized um, so they can be seen uh, on 67. We have two 12 by 12 tents as well as communal cooking apparatus. We also hope to have some campfires later in the evening. Several of our members, such as we have one, have solo stoves which are self are contained. We would require minimal electricity from the like where you plug the tree in, mainly for coffee. We will That's important. We will cancel the rally if the field is wet or if we're anticipating heavy rain. We don't want to negatively impact the field in any way. Last, open house. We hope to have an open house on Saturday morning whereby people can visit and learn more about the Airstreams and our club. One of our members is developing signage with facts about each individual trailer provided by the trailer's owners. The trailers are unique and they're, they're just very different. And so you can, that, that signage would give a, a feel for the different take and the, uh, years and models and makes and so forth. We expect no more than 25 trailers. And thus far we've had 15 sign up already. And at last, um, thank you for the opportunity to allow us 
to share Roxbury and to have an event which supports Roxbury businesses and hope and hopefully enlightens residents to the wonders and fun of Airstream travel. And then, and then that's our itinerary um, that's shown here. Okay. It well, seems it's great. I wanted to support and bring this forward. You know, it's another uh, event. So, um, you know, very cautious at this point. Um, I think there's a lot of benefits to this. There's at the educational experience, um, a lot of the, you know, not going to be overrun by the town. There's not going to be a lot of visitors, you know, locals can come. Uh, it's supporting our local business. It's, it's introducing people to this beautiful town, but uh, I'm looking for uh, feedback of what you guys think. Well, when I first, when it first come up, I, I would, I was, I, it's on record when I went, why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't understand, you know, but this is very, very clearly laid out. The excellent job. This, uh, you've answered mm -hmm. all the questions that I would have. Um, the only question I have, you mentioned a dog park. Is that the one in Bridgewater? And are they allowed to go? Because they're not residents. <laughs> you know, we, we threw, no, we actually were thinking of the Southbury dog park. Oh, yeah. Uh, ONG. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, and, and including ourselves, we have um our dog of course we can leave him at home for a bit but you know a lot of our campers you know they they travel with dogs and but we also you know expect they have to be on leash and clean up and we've been at the national rallies where dogs are there people are very respectful they they just you're not going to let the dog run amok or or do that, but and, we and if they're traveling with the dogs, they've got their the kennel cough shots and the rabies shots yeah. and everything else that you need. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I I I think it's a great idea. I... Yep. The only question that I have is um, from a liability standpoint. Yeah. Um, what kind of you know? I and I and first of all, I I want to just say how much uh, you are part of the community. The family is part of the community, and how much you've done for this community. Um, I think this is definitely a definite scenario. But uh, where would the liability fall in the town? Our, our club has insurance, so it okay. is a legit organization. So I don't know if it's a five hundred one c three. I'm sorry, I don't know that, but. We would provide a certificate of insurance with the town, you know, being the additional insured. So, so yes, the, within the organization of Air, of WBCCI, there we can access the insurance and cover the town for liability. Yeah, I think a good idea would be to get a copy of that so that. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes. Yeah, we and, and we did, uh, Kim, we did talk about that with with our group. But yes, I mean, mm -hmm. um, it's different. You know, normally we go to campgrounds. So then it's, oh, the campground. But yes. the idea of what I'll call an urban rally, even though we're not urban, um, <laughs> the or, Airstream and the, the organization the, they would like to support this these type of events and support us as as a club to allow for this. So we'll ensure we have the insurance. Absolutely. Yeah, and I and I feel about the fact that if the weather's bad, you know that mm -hmm. we'll be there. Well, yeah, fair. And you you had brought that up before, and we talked about mm -hmm. that. It's like no, we don't want to, you know, because yeah. you're pulling the rigs are you know, 4,000 pounds, like that sounds big, but not really for a rig, but we're, we don't want to drag our trucks in and our campers and screw up the field. Absolutely not. Yeah, you'll be, and, out, you'll be and, out there with, with machines trying to yank you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, nobody no, wants to do no, that. No, no one wants to do that. I don't want to do that. And I don't want the Bridgewater Fair thing where I'm, you know, um, and we talked about like a plan B, you know, you know, we said, well, what if it rains? Do we still hold a smaller event where our members come and we do things? We don't know at this point. I mean, we're just going to keep our fingers crossed for <laughs> good weather. But yes, any chance of rain or 
bad. Yeah, if we feel like the field, like the field is not going to handle it, we certainly won't put equipment in there. Certainly. But but even like this winter and the other day, you know, we did take members, uh, the people, uh, friends that not friends, our club members that are hosting it with us. And then also um, Ed and Kathy Roz, who are also in our club, we, we walked the field and we looked at it and we said, how can we make the, how, how, will, how would this look and how does this accommodate 20 trailers or 20 campers? And we all were like, oh my gosh, this is great. I mean, it's just the drainage, the, it's level, um, it, it will work. And we'll look organized, and that's a that's another big thing. Is um, Airstream the caravan, or excuse me, the uh, rally experiences? We don't just roll in willy nilly and just park anywhere. It's very organized. It's meant to look good. Um, you can go out online and look at Wally Byam caravans, and you can see all sorts of stuff that. Um, yeah, they've got, I mean, there's some cool pictures all over the world around the pyramids and everything else where they've done these caravans, but ours is just a simple rally and, you know, it's a, it's a way to get together and, and talk to other people, you know, in the club and, and also in the community. I, I think so, that that's the, main, the big um, component for me is that there's community uh, access. You know, if it were just camping, I can't say that I honestly would be in favor of it. But, you know, by wrapping in the uh, tour, so to speak, and the educational component, you know, so people can get involved, I think that's a well, great asset. And, and Kim, Kim, to your point, you know, we, we started out in planning and said, oh, that'd be great to have the pop-up pub and then people can come over. And and obviously that's not going to work. So our, our plan B was is Saturday morning and it's on the schedule. Yep. Yeah. You know, eight to ten. Eight you to know, ten. Yeah. Move I, that, that, that. You know, people are coming down to the market to have coffee or the road rate, whatever. You know, people. I. I. You know, post that we're gonna our our club understands that that will be kind of an open house. Yeah. And again, one of our club members, um, who's a uh, teacher at. Um, in Southington, he was like, oh, I got a great idea. I'm going to make sign. we'll make signs, and then everybody can describe what it is that's special about their Airstream. Because some people have vintage Airstreams, some people have new Airstreams, we're in between, you know, so in each club member can give a background of why they have this particular thing. And some club members may feel a little reluctant, honestly, of like having people walk through. I don't care. It'll take a minute. <laughs> Ours is 19 feet. But the exterior or to sit outside and to talk about everything, people people like doing it. Yeah, I think a lot of people, a lot of times, they the reason they do urban rallies is to stimulate a, a downtown area of a town. I mean, obviously, Roxbury doesn't fall into that category. Um, but so they, in, in urban areas, they would line the airstreams up and down Main Street and allow the townspeople to come in and they'd bring in food trucks and everything else. But this is a little different being Roxbury. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more of just a, a chance for people to come see the trailers in the field and talk to the owners. And Yeah, and then you have and Wayne. I you have Wayne's food truck. <laughs> yeah, Wayne's food truck. Wayne's, Heck yeah. Well, and to support, you know, kind of going back, you know, I, I kind of, <laughs> you know, look back at the plan of conservation development that was like, you know, we want to have events that support businesses. And again, I mean, granted, we're you know, not the big metropolis, but I think we're touching on Wayne and the market. Again, we reaching out to local farms and wanting to do that. The dis we've I've I've talked to Ron at the distillery and said, hey, we want to do a tour. You know, we're we're doing the best we can, I guess. You know. And and to, and to, to the other point about other stuff being open that weekend, I think the church is having a tag sale. Maybe the weekend. church has a tag sale. And also up, up, up opening opportunities if you want to do a church service at any of the three churches, you can do that. And you know, it's, it's not just about. Uh, businesses, but also experiencing what there is in Roxbury to see and do. 
I also think this is, although it, it is a three day event, it is significantly different and the impact on the town is very different. And I know you're both very responsible and have been with this town forever and, and love what you do, but just for the record, uh, trash cleanup, what kind of, uh, other, uh, you know, how would that be taken care of everyone's everybody takes out what, what they bring in. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, the units are self-contained. We've got fresh water tanks and black water tanks and gray mm -hmm. water tanks. And I think we'll get dumped on the ground. Everything or will nothing. go out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everything, we will leave the field exactly the way we found it. That's a good Boy Scout thing. Yeah, but, and I think yeah, a good point with trash. When we talked about that, you know, obviously we're having meals and everything else, but, you know, we will take care of that. I mean, that's how... I, I wouldn't even, I, I'm sorry, I didn't even think, of course, we'll take the trash That's a good out. question. But, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I just want it to be said because obviously things are going to be, you know, come into question. I, I do see people um, with hands up. This is, uh, there is a, a, a opportunity uh, for uh, comments from the public, but that's going to be at the end of the meeting. So just to let you know. Okay. Yeah. Happy to, you know, answer questions, of course. Actually, the public comment is not a discussion time. It's only for people. No to comments from the public. And it's only, uh, it's not for anything that's on the, the it's not an interactive time. Oh, so, okay. Okay. So, yeah. So um, the only other thing I guess would be um, uh, police, you know, and have monitoring, um, you know, the traffic, if we need to do that, maybe when people are pulling in or not really. I don't think so. I think that if we limit it to, you know, we've seen, um, uh, I, you know, we thought about that, like, you know, how to stage it so it's not a backup and 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 everything else. Is is that? Well, and then, and they don't all come at once. Once, yeah, um, it's kind of a trickle in thing, and then we have we have members that are actually parking the rigs. And uh, you know, make spacing them so that no, they're all they're not all trying to park at once. And and uh, I don't think that the fact that they're not all coming at once, they're going to be backing up onto the road. Um, I envision them entering through the Roxbury Market parking lot, that gate into the field, um, and then once the trailers are parked, either the rigs stay right there in front of them, or else that we move them. Usually, they stay right in front of the, them. Um, but the backs of the trailer, the trailers, as Julie mentioned, that all be backed up to the walls as you're going down 67, you would see the trailers along the fence line there. Cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, but I don't think they'll, I don't think it'll be a rush coming in like the national event. Yeah. You had to have, you know, you had 900 trailers, even though they came in over three days, it was a constant arrival period. I mean, we're talking 15, 20, 20. 25 trailers. most. And, at most so. and we can also, you know, address your concern and, and that's something we can talk to the club about is, you know, maybe we can give, you know, arrival times to spread that out, you know, so we don't get a bunch. I mean, I, the people the people who signed up are, inter you know, I, I've seen, you know, the the forms and they're, they're, we have kind of like any organization, like the core that, you know, does these things. And in fact, we're going to be visiting with, we're, we're headed, down to Florida in a couple of weeks. And I think we're going to be with hanging out with probably six or 12 of our club members, you know, and we'll talk to them and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll make sure that. And I, I would add that, that this, this is an older crowd. Yeah, they're old. Yeah. <laughs> we are, we are probably the youngest, well, Ed and Kathy as well, <laughs> Ed and Kathy Rouse, but uh, we are probably the, the, on the younger set of the, uh, patronage of, of this club um it's a it's an older crowd they're not we're not going to be partying all night in the field with a bonfire um it's 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 a uh yeah they're upper <laughs> generational crowd yeah. is, like i said we're, we are probably the, the youngest of the group so but although that's not that although that said there are some members that have uh, younger it's, children but but they're you know, the, this group, what we found with the club, I mean, we're, we're a very new mem we're new relative. We've been the, in the club for probably five years, almost five years. 
some are like charter members. I mean, they're just the other parents. I mean, yeah, they, grew just, up with it. <laughs> they grew up with it. So they, they're, they're good. They're solid people. Okay. How many of these smaller events have you both attended? Uh, anything this, like this small or this scale and. Oh we, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This scale, we have not been to an urban rally. But we've been to, to to camp, lots you know, of campgrounds. Yeah, most of the camp, you know, we we've had we had the airstream for about five years before we decided to seek out the club or, or learn about it. And then we've we, had it for a total of ten years now. Ten, yeah, we've had ours for ten years, and we've gone to I, I can't, Patrick, I don't know the the number, but you know, seven, eight campouts, okay. home campouts, you know uh rallies you know they've been in different campgrounds around connecticut um where they they've done one we've never yeah you know that's what we we've joined um they do one at mystic uh which we've not been able to do um but yeah and it it, it again it it's even during COVID, like they, I guess that's when we first started first camp out, they were so concerned about food, about serving food and how to make it work and how to, they're so respectful of the campground rules and how to. Yeah, they, they even, they even dismissed some campgrounds because they didn't feel like they could follow the regulations for COVID, you know, just because they didn't have an open area or a way they could set up a buffet where you could, you know, toothpicks and not touch each other's food and everything else. They were very, very uh, concerned about, you know, following the rules. That's, <laughs> I guess I would say that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And uh, I haven't heard a lot from Russ. Russ, do you have uh, any questions? You went off camera and went on mute for a minute. Um, I'm here, no. Okay. It's how to put some wood on the fire. <laughs> oh, Russ, we got ours going too. Yeah, it's the night for it. <laughs> okay, so your thoughts no, on this? I, I, I think this is a great idea. Um, I totally support it. Patrick, are we voting now or we're going to wait till the end? Or are we voting next meeting? Because it sounds like the three of us support this. Sounds like a lot of fun and I might go buy one of these things. <laughs> I know. I can't wait to see them. And if I, not, I I'm going to be hanging around, hanging around Billy's brother there. <laughs> and I, I be there. And I, I do support it. Um, I mean, and, and much in the spirit of, you know, this was on the table, just, you know, the same as the car show and everything else. Um, you know, the situation is significantly different. Um, but I feel that I feel that this really fits for our, as as Julie had mentioned, our plan of conservation developed to bring the community together. And that's always our intent uh, on any of these things. Um, so I, I feel that this really does support who we are and, and what we are as a town. Um, I'm not sure what the social media feedback will be on this, you know, um, but I'm but I, I'm willing to. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm still we, we here. We got to get to um, the point where we gonna, don't care and we do what we think we got to do. Yep, and we're not going to right? shut down because right. people are threatening. So. <laughs> I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm good with a vote. I'm good with a vote. Okay. I mean, I, I'm not opposed to people asking questions later, but I, I've had all my questions answered. Um, all right, me too. I'm, so I'm going to make a motion to approve this event. Um, and that's it with no contingencies. I, um, I would, I would say, uh, we do need to talk about police one way or the other, just to protect pedestrians. Right. That's okay. So that would be during, that would be Saturday morning, um, for the community open house. Yeah. Yeah. I could do that. All right. So I'll make a motion to approve this, um, that's it. That's my motion. Can I amend it a bit? Oh yeah. Because I I feel Discussion. that. Discussion. Oh, um, first get a second. And oh, then I'm sorry. A... Okay, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. So I'll second, and then we can add to this. So. Yeah. Okay. So. 
I got the All right. So discussion. Um, I, I would need the uh, insurance certificate naming the town. Yes. That would have to be, we would have to be contingent upon that. Yep. Correct. Yeah, and I think that's the only contingency that I would have. And then um, it just, you know, I think it's a good idea to have police there that morning just to direct traffic. That's easy. Yeah. We would have them typically around that time for uh, like the road runners anyway. If we would oh. have a, a road race that day, um, yeah, they'd yeah, kind of be in the area. So I, I don't know that it would be much more impact than that. You and know, it's not like we're carrying people from, you know, other outside areas. People aren't going to be coming to this. It's, it's going to be just something that is basically just for locals, for us only. All right. Made a motion. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Is that what we do now? Yeah, that's what you do. I guess so. So all in favor. <laughs> Aye. 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 So apprehensively. <laughs> Living and learning, Ross and Kim. Oh, wait. Patrick. Patrick, I have extra armor if you want it. That's good. We're good. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. All right. Thank you. Um, okay, so we we are approved uh julie bill congratulations thank you very much yeah, thank you. i'm thank very you. happy to, whatever we can do to help out and any and, any other questions please please reach out we we want to make it work definitely and we're going to continue to do that absolutely, absolutely. we know where we you live, live. <laughs> <laughs> and once again thank you for all you've done to the town for the town uh, over the years you really have been uh, uh, integral parts of this community and i thank you um, and to bring this forward i appreciate it Thank, thank you, Patrick, you. and thank all of you. Um, okay, uh, next on the agenda, uh, fence ordinance. Okay, I brought this up. I brought this up because of uh, some <clears throat> things that happen in town. I've chaired the Wetland Commission for up to 30 years now, and after the vote on the deer fence, which the commission did exactly what it's required to do under state regulations, they had to approve a deer fence that will fence in 29 acres. And there's nothing we could do about it. I did step down because I couldn't, in my conscience, vote for something like that. Uh, but I kind of left my, mem my fellow members who I cherish and love to make the decision. And the next day and that night, I got a lot of calls about how bad they felt about what they had to do and how they felt that um, there was nothing really to protect the animals. And I, I actually had one person wanted to resign from the commission because he or she felt so disgusted by the vote that they had to make. But it shows that Roxbury is a town that lives by its rules. And it shows that Roxbury is a town that cares about who we are and we will change when change is good, but change is not good when uh, we have people who come in and change the nature of the town. So what makes this town so great is the woods. It's the woods and we all moved here for the woods. And what makes the woods so great is it's animals. And unfortunately there's not any regulation federal state or otherwise uh, that really protects the animals. And I have no ill bearing on the person who applied for this. He's a good guy. That's what he wanted. He, ha he was totally within his rights to do so. And no, you know, that that's just, it is what it is. But I felt I had to do something um, to move this forward. I'm concerned about the town changing for the worse uh, because it's so loved. It gets overloved. And as um, Ed Tierney once said, places like this are going extinct. It's not the other way around. Um, we're under threat from just changing what it is and changing why we're here. And I, I don't care. I mean, I'm a 65 year old guy. I've, I've nothing but uh, great, great life. And, love living here and what goes on in the future, why would I care? But but I do care. I do care that Roxbury 
doesn't fall into a trap of uh, being overtaken by people who don't understand who we are and what, what we stand for. So I want to propose a deer ordinance, a deer fence ordinance. Um, I, I want to make sure the animals are protected because regardless of what the experts said, um, it changes the ecosystem to shut out that much land from something that is so important in that land. I mean, deer eat oak, oak, a lot of, they depend on oak trees. The reason why oak trees are here because of deer, because they eat the acorns and, um, and, and the whole ecosystem is tied in. And I believe that when you shut off that much land, you affect the ecosystem. You isolate it and you fragment it. Um, and I, I can't stand by and let that happen in this town or, or in Bridgewater or Washington, because I, I care about all the towns around here. But I can only do what I could do for Roxbury. So I propose an ordinance that would limit the amount of fence anybody could put up on their land. Um, I haven't figured it out yet, but I don't want to move forward because it's a lot of work without the support of my fellow selectmen. The ordinance, you know, it could be a fence ordinance, but then you get into agriculture and, you know, what, what are, my, are we going to hamper our farmers? But a deer fence is something that's eight feet high. And it, it's really a barrier and, and birds do die in it. And, and, and I, I don't think something at that scale belongs here. But people have the right to propose it and have the right to build it because there's no law against it. So I would like to um, propose an ordinance, which I will research and go from there. Uh, talk to other towns, see if there's other ordinances out there. I'm thinking of something that would limit the length, uh, the area that could be closed in by a deer fence to be four acres, which is what our lot sizes are. Um, Unfortunately, I couldn't convince uh, Stone Light Sam, which happens to be a dog, uh, but I couldn't convince his owner um, to, that there were sprays and deer resistant plants and other ways to reduce it. But to be fair to him, they, he did reduce it from 50 acres to 29 acres. So he, he did, uh, he did compromise and he does want to be a good part of this town and I understand that but I just feel that if you move to this town you should meet the town at what the town is and not the other way around and I'm not talking about Stone Light Sam I'm talking about anybody who moves here now Roxbury has been a place for the rich for a long time I mean Arthur Miller Dustin Hoffman all kinds of artists and really wonderful people. And those people, you never knew, know they're here. They don't build big walls along the road where they live. When they are in town, they're very incognito and quiet and silent. And they moved here for the same reason everybody else moved here. And for the same reason why the people who made this town, you know, the Lowe's, the Millers, the Hurlbuts, I could go on and on. The, the steers, you know, all those great people who really are who Roxbury is and who created what we are. Um, I want to make sure we honor that going forward. And we all as a town need to think about how we could protect ourselves uh, from things that go on around us. I mean, I drive up Route 7 in Kent and I see this big house on the hill with every tree around it cut down. I'm not a person who wants more regulation at all. I don't want ridgeline protection. Uh, I'm not so sure about this fence ordinance and that's why I wanna, I wanna shake it out. Um, but, but, but I feel that I, uh, from what a lot of people who are talking to me in town about this, that they want something done. And especially I owe it to the Wetland Commission, to the people who were brave enough to stand on and uh, not step off, although I wish they all stepped off, then it would have had to go to the state and that would have took about two years, but it would have been approved. But whatever, they did, they did what they had to do. 
and and uh, I know a couple of them feel uh, pretty pretty bad about it. So that's my proposal, Pat and Kim, and I just want to know your thoughts on whether I should proceed or, or whether you're not in favor of more regulation. I it's a oh I'm sorry Kim. behind you. I I agree completely with what you said. I felt that way right from the beginning when I was actually sitting in on the meeting. So I was aware of it at that time. So yes. And I did come up with the idea of talking to an attorney uh, who recommended it be much better to have an ordinance rather than it go through zoning. Yeah. It'd be simpler and easier to enforce. Mm -hmm. I actually have learned a little bit more. I mean, obviously, the character of the town and the wildlife and the, what we have here is so special. And and I started looking into it a little bit. I just didn't realize there was so much, uh, you know, compensatory damage to other animals getting stuck in it. Other, you know, and, and you know, you, the more you research, the more you, you're educated as to... Yeah the damage that it really does, let alone affecting the ecosystem of segregating watershed areas and places to hide for other animals. Um, so I, I support continuing the discussion. Right. I agree. The thing that okay. when I was yeah. at the listening to the uh, information at the meeting, I was so surprised. And I don't know if this is what uh, was finally approved because I wasn't a part of that. Um, I didn't go to that one. But it was every 100 feet, there was a 12 inch by 12 inch opening. That was it to allow. Uh, yeah, yes, but I, I I stepped out and I didn't stay on the call for the uh, meeting for the vote. Uh, yeah. I didn't want to cause any legal issues by staying on and listening. So mm -hmm. I, I really don't know what I know they approved it. I know that a lot of members were very upset the next day, but I, I think our consultant, um, you see wetlands is based on protecting the animals who live and depend directly on the wetlands. Uh, the wetland law was weakened a couple of years ago when the developers got our legislatures to, because we were able before to use wildlife to deny a, an application, but now you have to tie it directly into how it will affect the wildlife in the wetlands. And there's no way to do that with a deer fence. Mm -hmm. So they proposed openings every hundred feet to let the little critters in and out. Our consultant recommended, I think a foot, instead of making the fence three feet deep, keep it up a foot so the little critters that wouldn't have to look for those places mm -hmm. or an opening every 10 feet. I don't I don't know what they what they agreed to. But uh, I think Patrick said it the best in that it, it fragments watershed areas. It it does so much. And I, I just I, I lost my faith in consultants, even though I'm one of them. Um, I've heard so much over the past few months from consultants who and then I go on Google and I, I research it myself and I, I see a lot of, I don't see a lot of facts there, but, but it is what it is. Yeah. After your meeting, I actually went online and tried to find uh, regulations that limited deer fencing and I couldn't, I couldn't find any. There aren't any federally, statewide. There are a couple towns with with ordinances, and that's what I'm looking. At. That's what I will look into. It's going to take a lot of my time, but mm -hmm. and it sounds like you both support that. So I'm going to move forward, and I'll write the ordinance myself with the help of an attorney who doesn't want to be named, but he's going to volunteer to help me, and mm -hmm. um, and put it. Put it, of course, it'd have to be approved at a town meeting, and yeah. so the town will be involved. Yeah. Of course. And this course. isn't about one one application. I think it it was the thing that tricked it into we need to wake up and be ahead of the game in the town. I think we are ahead of the game, but we need to keep awake as to what may go around about us. I heard that after COVID, things would change and Roxbury would change because people moved here full time. Well, those people I find are great. They put our, their kids in the school, they're 
they're part of our community. It's all good stuff. But we got to watch out for the big stuff because Roxbury's getting the name and I don't want to become the Hamptons. Thank you, Russ. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. So um, on to the next order of business, if you're good. Yep. Okay. Uh, Weller's Bridge update. This is a continuation from last month's meeting. Um, and what we are discussing is the removal of um, the rumble strips that were placed on Weller's Bridge um, as, you know, basically uh, quality of life for the people that live nearby. Um, so what I did is uh, there, there were a couple of companies that won't even look at it. Um, I was able to talk to Kevin at SNS um, and we were looking at three separate areas, approximately 600 total feet um, where we would grind down the rumble strips and repave that selected area. Um, so it would be an area uh, by uh, on Weller's Bridge near South Street. So from the intersection down, uh, you're looking at 200 feet, another so 200 feet or so uh, by the corner on the west side past Hemlock going down the hill. I would say the Hardy's house, you know where they are, but um, where that corner is because people keep uh, 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 clipping that corner and uh, that's another spot. And then down at the bottom um, by Michael and Jessica Patterson's house, which is just up from the bridge. Uh, so there'd be three selected areas. Um, the price or the estimate came in uh, at $9,800. That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's worth it. I do too. We're only doing selected areas. Right. Yeah. And because no, eventually and, and, we're going to have to repave that whole road, so the rest of it would get done at that time. But this, uh, yes, the next time it gets paved, um, you know, there is uh, a, a lot of scalloping that uh, occurs down at the bottom by the Pattersons anyway. Um, but in 2025, we're going to be replacing that bridge. So with all the construction equipment and everything, it'd be pointless to do it beforehand. Um, yeah, so absolutely. if we did anything, this would be a, basically a temporary accommodation, if you will, um, to improve the quality of life, especially on the corners and uh, near South Street where the line doesn't specifically line up. Um, and it is uh, it, it is somewhat of a nuisance uh, for the yeah, people that live yeah. there. You can't, yeah, it I vibrates the house, you can't, you know, yeah, and, and we've had- there. I, I stood there and experienced it. And you must hear at your house, Pat, right? I sit on, you guys know, I sit on my porch every day, morning and night. Um, and I, it, it, I I live with the windows open from the end of April until October. I do not, in, except for my bedroom, I don't have air conditioning. So um, I, my my house is always, I, I heard it all summer. Um, so, but I, that's why I want to kind of stay out of this because I am somewhat affected by it. And I- right. No, that's why I went and did this. So uh, Kevin thinks that he can do that. It's it's going to be basically a twenty inch uh, slot that's you know cut into it, um, and then they're going to. The reason why it's so much cost is because they have to hand pave it in that area. Right. Um, so it's I'll something. Make a, that, I'll make a motion to approve this work at ninety eight hundred dollars. I I second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Any other discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We'll move forward with this project. Thank Excellent. you. Great. Thank you, Pat, for doing yeah, thank that. You for all that research. That was great. No problem at all. That's what I do. Um, the next is uh, is uh, just to move forward with the minor uh, bridge culvert resolution. We have now um, picked a bid, uh, and now we want to kind of move forward with that. Um, also, uh, temporary easements have gone out to all the adjoining properties. So what this is is. Uh, resolved that the town of Roxbury is to authorize and sign a local bridge program supplemental application and the associated agreements to move forward. Um, town of Roxbury for minor bridge road over Camp Brook. Um, so this is the culvert that's 26 feet in the ground. Um, and it's, as I said, it already gone out to bid. It's a pretty extensive job. Um, everybody's been notified around it. So I would like to uh, move forward with this. I, I make a motion to move forward with the uh, Minor Bridge Road culvert replacement. Second. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Russ. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And, any and the road will be shut down for 
what four or five months it'll probably be you know again um i i get, I, I hate to put this down they will have uh you know 180 days to complete this job uh davenport took longer um, we had product delays, getting the steel, getting the concrete. Um, I don't see those problems now. The idea is to fit it shit during the summer. Um, yeah, well, but again, we don't have school. Yeah, they have their time, you know. Yeah. But uh, so, you know, I, I won't make that promise. Although uh, everyone is very optimistic that we won't run into the same extensions that Dad. Well, I just asked, down. so make sure people are aware that the roads can absolutely be for some time. And, and what, um, what, at least a month in advance, we'll have the electric sign out with signs posted. Uh, we have the alternate routes already laid out. This is all being uh, yeah. done by Cardinal Engineering. They've done a good job. What's the uh, what's the yeah. um, anticipated start date? Is there one yet? We don't have a contract officially yet. Okay. So I will be once we officially sign with um, with the winning bid, then we'll move forward. OK. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next up is uh, short-term rentals. Okay, that's me. Um, so I, I got a call from our assessor who wanted some information or wanted to really tell us information about a meeting she had gone to with other assessors from the Litchfield County area. And uh, she really wasn't sure what to tell them. But Roxbury is one of the only towns in that group that does not... Um, does not uh, make people pay property tax on the structures that are solely short-term rentals because there are people who purchase homes only for that business to take place. They don't live in them, not like renting a room out of the house for extra income, that's their business. And so she you know, wanted to know what we thought about that, but I said, I really put it back to her. I said, you know, what would be really helpful for us is to find out, um, fi contacting other assessors to find out what other towns do um, and what it, with short-term rentals and the things that are taxed, the things that aren't taxed, uh, what towns uh, do as we do, which is really nothing um, yet. Uh, and you know what what is taking place you know so it's the same kind of thing as uh similar in a way you know sort of talking about the deer fence but you know i've brought the short-term rentals up in the past and just trying to come up with some sense of um what the plan is you know if people keep coming in and buying homes that are available and they're not living in them and they're just renting them out to people who are here for a week or a month you know, a short-term rental is not a, you know, it's not a, you know, six month rental, you know, or it's not a whole summer. Roxbury has rented out homes during the summer for an eternity. And so we're used to that, but it's under, usually 30 days or under. And uh, most of the time it'd be weekends or, a, um, you know, a week or two at a time. And then it's that constant turnover. And it's the houses that are purchased solely as a business. Um, I just think it's something we need to really start looking at and, and take a look at the zoning regulations too, because a bed and breakfast is only allowed in zone D, which is our business district. It's not allowed anywhere else in town. And so I, I, there's gotta be some sort of cohesion there between the two. Uh, but anyway, I put it back to her, asked her, and so she sent an email out to the people, in, the person in charge of their group, and they're kind of surveying, and then she's going to get that information back, and then we can kind of go from there, I guess. But I, I just wanted you to be aware of what was taking place. And yeah. just to be clear, just, I'm sorry, Russ, uh, just to be clear, this is uh, basically now the contents of this business. Correct. It's the contents of the business. So okay. it would be furniture and everything else in it because if it's okay. a bit it's there's a personal property tax that gets paid to the town uh, at the at expense of running a business so and it doesn't go out to any of those so i thought that was well, an interesting we're, we're, question so yeah we're going on another era though we're in a we started this with just want to know who is doing, mm -hmm. you know, these these things by registering with no fee. But yeah. now we're finding out that um, 
people are actually just buying homes to to rent them like hotels basically right i mean we've known this for a while this has been going on for for a bit but um i you know it's now it's so coming. i mean those homes are taxed right so they are so this would be an extra tax yes it's because it's a if it's a business but we you know <laughs> if they're offering a B&B &B, they're not allowed to do a B&B &B because our zoning regulations say they can't so I you know I haven't researched to see which one offers breakfast <laughs> um but it gets a little it can get a little messy so it, there's a lot of questions there are a lot of questions and the towns yeah. also are having big discussions on this and and not quite sure what to do so you know, we're not alone in it, but I think it's important for us to continue talking about it and researching so that we, uh, you know, do what's best. So you thinking like a hotel kind of tax? I don't know. Like, <laughs> well, I don't know. What's your, or is it just a personal property tax or I guess a business? I, I would have to be under personal property. Yeah, I mean, she taught, she met, she stated it as personal property tax, but, you know, again, I, I, we had a brief conversation on the phone. Um, I had some suggestions for her, the information to gather. And I think once that okay. comes in, it will be easier for us to. So what do you think? Just we'll, we'll put this off for another month. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, don't, yeah. I, I, I would want to look at what other towns are doing, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's no rush. There's no rush. No. And thank you, Ken, no. for, yes. for bringing this up in the first place, because now we're learning more about. Yeah. I, I just the world changing, so to speak. Yeah, I just think there's a lot out there, and you know, we really have to find out what other towns are doing, and and what happens in a lot of cases, just like on the zoning board, we kind of often make decisions and institute things that other towns haven't done yet. So I, I think that's a pretty good record. <laughs> so yeah. it's hard with me to, uh, you know, to do the research, see what's out there, and do what's best for the town. Right. Agreed. Excellent. Right. Okay. Um, on to budget capital expense, what we've been working on. Um, so public works continues. Um, whole barn, uh, which is just to the side, uh, the electric, it's going to be electrified starting tomorrow. Um, so hopefully uh, next board of selectmen meeting, um, we might have power down there, which is exciting. And then we're going to do the same thing where, you know, we're going to put up the lights um, uh, because we could buy them much cheaper ourselves than having the electrician do it. Um, and then the next thing is going to be doing some repairs on that building. Um, the gutters need to be replaced. There's literally holes in them. Um, and then framing up the garage door bays so we can actually put garage doors. And then the next step will be to start to uh, insulate that and start to make it uh, more of a weather tight building instead of an open barn. Uh, the transfer station loader is still all ripped apart. Um, we got a, we're about two weeks out. So when you see the new loader, you get to see the wonderful work that the public works crew has done. Um, once it gets back up to the transfer station right now, we're still uh, just borrowing it between the two places. Um, new truck number five and rebuilt truck number eight are now lettered. Um, the old truck uh, number five, uh, we had uh, had a, 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 a offer for trade in value of like 14.5 and ended up selling it, I believe, for 17.6 on Municipid. Um, that will be picked up tomorrow um, and that will be will be done. Um, Next is uh, after the loader's done, we're going to start on the public works building loft uh, in the back. So we have that extra storage facility um, where we can put all our supplies, start to clean out that bathroom and have a closed area where stuff can stay clean. Um, and honestly, uh, I just have to note, we've had a pretty good winter so far. We're ordering some more salt because of the last couple of weeks, um, but overall we've done fantastic. Uh, and this week, also Stanley Tree Service is back in town. This is hazardous tree removal paid for by Eversource. Um, and they are starting on Davenport Road, uh, which is uh, the backbone line for the town. More, more uh, power comes in for the town through Davenport than anywhere else. And uh, they've identified 28 trees that are going to be coming down. That's their first priority. And then we will continue to work around town because we have lots of areas. And uh, we are continually working on uh, the uh, uh, policies for the uh, for the town and job descriptions. That's continuing. So our HR policies, and that's about it from a capital expense. 
um, and uh, and budget fire marshal's report. Hang on. Um, it was uh, just a decent report. They have uh, additional keys for the knock boxes, and uh, she also states that uh, Mine Hill Distillery has changed hands. A new full inspection was complete of their uh, for their new liquor permit. And there were a couple of things that were corrected uh, and they were given some state forms. Other than that, it was an uneventful month, but it was a little bit more under uh, uh, more uh, eventful on the resident trooper side. Uh, we have our new officer, uh, David Buck, who's actually in his training right now, his field training. So he's going to be on his own soon. Um, and just last week, I went to the state police training facility to learn more about the police officer standardized training or post training, uh, which is very comprehensive. As a matter of fact, the book is massive um, of all the training that has to go through in order to be a post certified officer. Um, we need to get on this. So we've actually talked with Matt and Officer Witkowski has been officially appointed as the accreditation manager so he can manage this, this process. There are several levels that we will need to get through um, from now till 26. Uh, we do have time. It's going to be a year before any of these. Uh, we meet any of these. Uh, literally, some towns are getting rid of their police force because it's so difficult. Um, I don't see that as an option for us. I feel like if we plan correctly. We assign it right. That's why Joe Wachowski was a good person to kind of take on, take this over. Um, I want to keep our police force in our town. Um, so we will get through this, um, but there is going to be a lot of extra work that's going to be necessary. Um, many, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. What's the, um, what's the number of, is there a number of hours or is it number of courses or it's, credit? Yes. It's all different courses that have to be, have to be taken. Yeah. Is it like a certain number of credit hours that they have to do or I, I don't know what's No, the... it's it's certain courses that have to be done. Okay. Okay. It's a it's a training, like training modules yep. uh, that you go through. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, and I will say most uh a lot of towns are scrambling. Um, there are towns with one officer or if they have, um, uh, you know, there's there was one uh, person, Don Stein, on the phone, and he has one officer that's his SRO. So he, if he, they either have to go through all this training and basically assign somebody to work on this training with him, um, or he has to lose his uh, police designation um, and he can no longer carry. So it is a big deal um, and we're on it, but uh, more information to follow because it's still somewhat cloudy. Um, most of the things, honestly, that we do fall under Troop A. We're in a resident trooper program. So there's been some ask uh, on the state level to see if they could uh, tailor it to resident trooper towns because we don't have nearly the requirements or uh, and there may be things that come to town ordinance that we need regulation for, um, but more to follow. Um, but hopefully uh, some of this can get settled uh, in the next year. Mm -hmm. Other than that, there were um, four criminal, non-criminal investigations, seven accidents, four infractions, 11 warnings, and 238 miscellaneous requests for service. And that was the state, uh, res the uh, resident trooper report for February. Um, on to other business. I have one other business that I just wanna talk about real quick. Okay. Um, we had a uh, an event, um, that uh, Susan Bicewich had, had we, we were talking at an event and she wanted to do a, an event to honor our Korean and Vietnam veterans. Um, we did have an event last night um, and Susan Bicewich was here, Cindy Harrison, Eric Bethel, um, and even Jahana Hayes showed up. Um, it was uh, it was an invitation for, uh, for veterans and their families. Um, that was the invitation uh, and it was beautiful. It was so, so nice. It was nice. You know, the those that served in, in Vietnam and Korea, you know, didn't have the welcome home um, that other wars did. And it was really, really nice to recognize them. I wish more could, people could have been there. Um, but I think for those in attendance, it meant something special because it meant something special for me. Um, so I was just proud of our town yesterday. So 
Thank you. Um, for you know, thank you guys. Uh, and Sarah Foreman did a great job. Kim Barron uh, sang the national anthem. Uh, Mason Martinelli uh, said the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Troop 65 carried forward the flag. It was just absolutely a wonderful event and well-deserved for our veterans. So uh, I was very proud of us. So I just want to let you guys know. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah. Um, any other business? No. No. Okay, communications from the public. Oh, there's a hand raised. Didn't, oh, you didn't want to hear from us. Yeah. Well, this is this is the, what we normally do at the beginning. So this is just um, Patrick. Is what's the the layout here? This is not about a discussion, but people are going to anybody that would like to leave a comment can do so. Okay. Okay. I, I uh, this is Rich Esposito. Just thank you for doing uh, and being involved with what you did yesterday. It was amazing. So I I agree that I, I don't think I've ever seen four elected service uh, government people come into the town on the same day and just kind of say, thank you, <laughs> uh, Korean and Vietnam vets, whatever. It's amazing. And Good Rich, job. thank you. Thank you for your service and to all our veterans. Yeah. Thank you so much for your service. Hey, talk, about a surprise. talk about a surprise. Sue Staffordshire was totally surprised. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a good event. I'm glad everybody was able to make it. Yeah, she's been carrying this kind of thing for many years at the senior center. So good job. Correct. Correct. Glad you enjoyed it. Well deserved. Um, Trevor, do you want to uh, say something? You had your hand raised. Over me. Rich beat me to the uh, unmuting the microphone. Thanks, Rich. Um, but uh, thanks for your service, Rich. Uh, I have a few comments. And uh, first of all, I want to thank the Board of Selectmen uh, for the transparency around the Concor event at every level. Uh, if more of us participate, then more of us will know what's going on. And for my part, I'm trying to encourage my neighbors here in town to do more of that. That's why I'm here tonight. Um, specifically, uh, I wanna thank you for creating the special forum that allowed RPM to come in and give us some more information which they failed at massively. Uh, this was their opportunity to make it work and to recognize the character of the town of Roxbury and make their model fit with our town, and they just failed. So thank you for creating the forum, which allowed that discussion and that observation. And secondly, for the survey, which allowed folks to uh, reach Ooh, out cool. to you all and uh, say hi and give you our, our feedback. Kim Tester, thank you for that amazing summary. Uh, I, like you, uh, I actually walked into the forum with a massive no over my head, but with the passionate speeches from our fire chief and ambulance court chief, I began changing my mind. Uh, ultimately, my final decision to vote no in the survey was because I'm a numbers guy, uh, the, the math made no sense for me in terms of the return that would come to our volunteer firefighters and ambulance corps. And I'm going to have a little more to say about that in just a moment. Uh, but your summary, Kim, was fantastic. Uh, as far as the uh, Facebook uh, post, I own it. I'm going to talk about that real quick. Russ, you're a passionate guy. I love the deer fence uh, proposal. And uh, that, I think, dovetails perfectly with Kim's uh, discussion about short-term rentals. Linda and I moved here from New York for all the reasons, Russ, that you cited. It's the country. You know, unfortunately, we're real close to Wellers Bridge Road, so we don't see as many critters as, as Kim, who lives across the road, and all, maybe all the rest of you. But when we see them, I love it. And I don't understand why anybody would want to have giant fences to prevent deer from crossing their property. So I'm, I'm thrilled that these two issues are bringing bought, brought before the board of selectmen for further discussion. Um, going back to the car show, I own it. I posted it on Facebook. I'm a social media dude. What can I tell you? I met the love of my life, Linda Ray on Facebook. Uh, 
Uh, there's a new member in town named Kevin who's here at the meeting tonight. Or he, or he left. He was here. Uh, he's here. I think he joined because he saw my post on the Roxbury CT page on Facebook, encouraging folks to come to tonight's meeting and to participate more. So to me, I think social media is a valuable tool for communications. There are always going to be knuckleheads. You got to accept it as a given and you just got to ignore them and move past that and, and create different conversations. Paula Lezeski is here and she and I kind of kind of manage that to, to, to step away from that in that thread. Um, regarding fundraising, uh, I, until attending the forum, I had no concept of how much our volunteer firefighters need more of our financial support. Uh, again, Linda and I, we're money people. We find money for small businesses. I've already reached out. I've already spoken to Kay, who is in charge of fundraising at the fire department. And I'm going to come up with some ideas to contribute that can hopefully help us, our neighbors here in town, bring some more funds to show the value that we place in our first responders. Uh, Billy and Julie, the streaming show, I love the idea. Uh, it, I love that Wayne is being respected in he's our local small business. Two thumbs up, Wayne. I yeah. love that Mine Hill is being respected. Two thumbs up. Uh, I would encourage you maybe to reach out to Manuela, who's the manager at the Roxbury uh, liquor store, and maybe she can do a special wine tasting event. I personally love Cava. Maybe she could do a Cava event, but that's just me. Um, and, and maybe just that really becomes or more, even more inclusive. One other thing on uh, two other things on, no, three other things on the streaming event. Uh, um, the, is there any way to create something that could raise a few dollars for our first responders? Maybe that's something we can put into that Airstream event to try to find some way to make some money for them. Uh, I looked up the full moon for June and you're in luck. The full moon is Sunday, June 4th, which means Chances are real good. You're going to have great weather that weekend for the event. Last but not least, she's not here in the room. Linda Ray is an insurance broker. So if you need any assistance helping to get that insurance certificate, just send me a Facebook private message and I'll connect you with her. She's going to be kicking and screaming because she hates selling insurance, but she's done events like yours before. Um, last but not least, and thank you all for your patience with my exuberance and enthusiasm. Uh, participate. I see there's a lot of folks here tonight. I don't know if this is normal for a BOS meeting, but we need more of this. We need more of this in our town uh, because this is communication and transparency and helps us to understand what a wonderful job the folks who work in our town are doing specifically in, in tonight's meeting. Uh, Russ, Kim, and Pat, and uh, thank you for your hard work, and uh, thanks you all for putting up with me for 17 and a half minutes. <laughs> thank you, Trevor. Trevor. I'm gonna go to uh, MQ. There you go. Hi, everybody, Hi. Meredith. Um, I just wanted to touch on the conservation committee vacancy. Um, back on February 17th, I had emailed Aaron about the vacancy. Um, I, I'll read the email I sent. Um, I don't know the whole process of trying to volunteer for a commission. So I didn't send it to Patrick, Russ, or Kim. Um, I just had sent it to Rocks Connecticut Conservation. Um, I just said, hello, Aaron. I see there's a vacancy on the committee or the commission. I would like to apply to be um, a member and fill the vacancy. I love this town and would like to always preserve the beauty and character of our small town. I said green space is sacred these days and the animals that call it home. Please let me know how to apply for this position. Um, I forward the email to you, Patrick and Russ. Kim, I don't have your email right off the top of the hand, but I can look it up tonight and forward it. So um, if the vacancy, Aaron did get back to me and said that somebody was interested in the position for the clerk's position and the vacancy, but she didn't know what was gonna be filled. So I had just gotten back to her again and said, well, please let me know. And if the vacancy is still there or the clerk's position, if they needed help with either one, I'd be interested. So um, my offer from February 17th still stands. Um, and I can obviously email you, Kim, and let you know. But um, I've been in the environmental industry for almost 20, 25 years. 
Um, I have already 900 plants ready to go in the ground for spring. I grow a lot of food, um, probably almost I'll have 2000 and on my property. Um, I grow chemical free non GMO food from seed. Um, I am huge on clean water, clean air and a clean environment for our kids and to keep it that way. And that's one thing that I love about Roxbury is that we have the cleanest water. We have a lot of green space and we don't have a lot of light pollution. I mean, to step outside at night and to look at the stars and really appreciate what we have. And I have a lot of critters on my property. Um, my wetlands is thriving all over. And I think that it's a great thing to try to conserve the town um, the best way possible with working with everyone. So that's all I wanted to say is that I, I did have an interest and I sent it. So that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you, Meredith. Uh, Joe Q. Hey, good evening, everyone. How are you? Great. I wanted to uh, talk about a few things. First, completely in favor of Billy and Julie Steers' event. I think it was great that you guys approved that tonight. It fits exactly what I think um, the town of Roxbury is after. <clears throat> and exactly what I had in mind when I came to a year ago to discuss some economic vitality for our small businesses. So I commend you on that vote. I think that was a great decision. I think you can take a little armor off, Patrick. Um, number two, secondly, um, the deer fence. I thought that was a fantastic idea. We're a country town, we're a rural community. I've had my, um, my own experiences with deer fence around our own property here with, uh, with new neighbors. Great neighbors, by the way. Um, but I think folks move here from urban areas and, um, well, maybe they just aren't well versed on biodiversity and all our critters, right? So, you know, we've got Eastern cottontails and box turtles. Um, we've got deer and we've got all types of wildlife. So, um, although I'll agree with Russ, I am never really in favor of creating new laws if they're not necessary ordinances. But in this case, I think that uh, I think that's a great idea. So um, I don't often, well, I don't say that often, but I uh, I disagree with Russ at times and I let him, you know, I'm well known, let him know that. But uh, in this case, uh, Russ, I, I completely agree with the deer fence. Um, <clears throat> thirdly, the short-term rental thing, uh, that's an interesting one. And, you know, I think it was stated while you were discussing this that, you know, many of these people do already pay property taxes uh, on their homes. And um, it sounds like it's a complicated one. It sounds like there should be, you know, some considerable, considerable discussion about that. Um, and I think the residents should be included. So, you know, I think all I would ask with that is, is if, you know, you guys move forward on that after acquiring whatever information you acquire, that maybe we do hold a, a public meeting um, on short-term rentals and uh, whatever taxation that may be encumbered in that. Because um, I will say this, I've met a lot of new people over the course of the last few years as a result of COVID. Many of these um, folks that have come here and taken advantage of short-term rentals, they wind up moving here. Um, and more times than none, I, I see them uh, and a position where they'd love to buy a home, but the inventory is low. And so they settle for a rental, short-term rental, um, in order to, uh, you know, allow some time to go by for something to come on the market. So I don't want to, uh, I don't want to see the town be in a position where we're, <clears throat> you know, um, hindering that in any way, because, um, I think that's a positive thing, you know, and, and they contribute to, uh, to our, uh, small businesses. Um, lastly, um, I'd like to talk about affordable housing. Um, I've had the opportunity to read some correspondence that I've come across. It was eye-opening. Um, took it upon myself to review some uh, information that was posted on the town website. Um, read some meeting minutes about um, the transfer of some property. <clears throat> uh, on North Street. And so 
Um, I'm hoping that at some point the conversation could be had, maybe in future Board of Selectmen's meetings or by way of special meeting to discuss, you know, what the what is the plan? Um, does the Board of Selectmen uh, have a uh, an idea in mind in, conju in in conjunction with the zoning department and the planning department as to um, housing? Uh, and is there something in the works? Um, what are the uses of the properties that we're looking at? What would they be purchased for and all the above? Um, because just like the deer fence, you know, a lot of us um, want to make sure that we do preserve and protect the town and its rural character. Um, there are a lot of um, state laws that um, exist out there that I think were created um, for much larger towns by folks who don't live in rural communities. And I think that's worrisome. So we just have to do a good job to make sure that, you know, when adopting those things, um, that they meet the needs of our community. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the few that come off the top of my head are like the, uh, the 830G uh, regulation with the state, which is an old one. But, you know, um, if, if someone decides to come to Roxbury and build a uh, housing complex, and it has 30% affordable housing um, that they don't have to adhere to our zoning regulations. Um, and, and I'm not a zoning expert, but this is what, you know, I've tried to educate myself as best as I could. Um, and it appears as though they don't have to adhere to, you know, uh, minimum lot size requirements, height requirements. Um, and so someone could build a, you know, 20, use a 20 unit complex on a third of an acre. Um, you know, and that's, that's just, just alarming. So I, uh, I'm always in favor of keeping our, um, keeping our zoning department, which we've duly elected in charge. And I hate to see the town, you know, um, give up those, um, those powers to the state, um, especially, um, individuals who don't live in rural communities and, and make laws for, you know, urban areas. So, that's it. I, I think uh, I think tonight was a great meeting, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Rich. You had your hand up. It's gone now. Are you good? Oh, it's getting late. <laughs> it's not that important. I just wanted to. Uh, I mentioned about uh, Greta Thornburg um, the other day. Never mind. Um, I wanted to thank Kim for her uh, honesty with all the. Uh, the issue with the, the car thing and whatever. And, and the guys did a great job with that. So, and, you know, it's interesting. We have one neighbor that came around and gave us paperwork and got the honey excited and whatever. So that's sort of how that happened. I guess next time we, we better think a little more clearly about it and figure out another way to, I can't calm her down sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that didn't help. Anyway, thank you so much for what you guys did tonight. Appreciate it. I didn't I didn't know how many people would show up. I felt bad. Last time in January or something, there was two or three people. You know, it was snowing. We had all the bad weather and who knows what. So good night and thank you. <laughs> thank you, Rich, for your comments. Right now. Okay. Uh, I see no other, uh, anyone else there. So that's over. And I have nothing else unless you guys do. Russ? Kim, nope. Nope. and I got a motion to adjourn. I want to eat. I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> right there with you, Russ. Right there with you. <laughs> I Kim is seconding it, I see. And that is a, a, any discussion. All in favor, we're going to eat. Uh, all right. Thank you all for your everybody. Input. We're going to continue to do our best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye-bye.